which brings us to the other study you wanted to talk about, the zero click study, which I've spoken to numerous people on this blog now. Yeah. Um, and that's not really about, you know, helping. It was more about like, for like set like antitrust issues, which Rand Fishkin is very big into. Yeah, um, and for a point, yeah, and, and I I could I could see like if he because he had certain parts of that in, in the beginning of it, but it's, it's just his conclusions that we're getting there weren't we're making a lot of stuff, and and even just the. The way the data was presented and, and a couple ways to it, it's like the like there was a lot of good pieces to it, and, and it's one of the things where I think if he had come at it like you know purely from an antitrust issue with the idea of like look at this as was, or if it was, I think his larger point too was the idea of look you know look at this the shrinking world of the SEO, look at like how you know we're we've got less and less to play with and we we don't have these access to it, but it's one of the things where I think the ultimately the way it was presented. Um, you know, like caused damage in the the way it was because you just had everybody running around saying that like oh fifty percent of this didn't happen and and it was like there was the math and the graphs didn't even add up to that in the way it was working and and you know there was different ways to approach it to say well in reality you know we know this percentage is is actually um, something that you can't measure and you would admitted you can't measure so you really can't claim that as part of that fifty cents so let's back that back out of there and there was another uh, piece of it where. Um, it was really people that were kind of like they would do an initial search and it wasn't that they weren't clicking because they because the format was doing anything to it they just didn't find what they're looking for in the first search so they searched again right and, and so that was like a I call them never clickers instead of like zero clickers and it was like well you can't really can't count that in it has nothing to do with the the way it works it's just people do that all the time right, right. and, and uh, so once it started carving it down it was a much much smaller like piece of the puzzle and even then there was parts of it where you know it's like well it's because that's going to an ad or going with this and and right. so well, look I, I, I get his point you know I get a point that what he wants to make with this one but like again it, it ends up creating like this very like toxic kind of clickbaity type of headline to it that that causes more damage in the circulation and uh, even I remember in the article when I, I'd done the research that basically said like look how many people have actually like quoted this since it's come out and just like how far this went and on the uh, update of it and it, to the point to where you know the the line even got you know used in congress at one point to kind of like bring this up as a, as a point to it and it's something that that you know google could have, you know could easily like knock down and basically say, well none of that's accurate like there's none of this the way it works so they, but that's, it, yeah, the, that's yeah. my biggest yeah. problem so yeah, yeah rand he could have broken it down by type of query this because mm. some things like you search for how old is barack obama it's gonna yeah the nobody's answer is gonna there. click Fine. yeah you search for you know a local result and you click on a local pack. It's not taking you to the website. It's take, still in the website, but you're probably getting a phone call. Yeah, stuff like that. So you could have broken it down by by like different type of query intent. Yeah, and obviously he he, he did it for that, that purpose. So I, I get it. That's I think that's all I really wanted. And and when I wrote that that piece on it, like I even like helped. I had actually used data that he had used in other pieces when he was still writing for Moz or whatever it is to say look. This is still coming from that same source, and we we know these things are this. So let's call this what it is and break it down for it, and and that's why it is. But it, I I think the problem was is that like I think even if he didn't if he if even if he didn't use like the fifty percent line, like if he'd come back and said in reality it was this whatever. Well, he I came think back that, and did a sixty percent line later. Yeah, and the but it, and that's that was even worse in the sense that it went. But I think that was why I basically came back and said like we, I really need to write this piece because it's just getting worse. But if he'd come back and even said, like, in reality, it looks like this. It was, you know, but you could have said any number. You could have said, hey, look, you know, 20% or 10% or whatever it is. And they, any of those would have been damaging in some sort of to basically see what it was. But it wasn't like that. It was something that was just, you know, gargantuan and, and really, again, just does things from the standpoint of, like, look what's happening for these types of things. And, yeah. Right. So uh, basically, I was going to basically say that. I had issues with the data, mm -hmm. like every, like a lot of people did. Yeah. It wasn't just like it wasn't just even Rand fa fans had issues with the data. Yeah. Again, his intentions are amazing. Um, the amount of money he spent probably to do that was significant. Mm -hmm. The issue I had on Google's end was that Google didn't really rebuttal it with any data. Yeah. They did post a blog post. I think Danny Sullivan wrote it or somebody, and basically saying, well, you know, from a Google perspective, we're driving more traffic. Yeah. They won't say how much. They didn't say any percentages. I'm like, just give us some data. People love numbers. Yeah. You could say, put your 60% number on there, or 59% or whatever it might be, because people will believe that. Yeah. And Google not doing that, in my opinion, and just saying we drive more traffic than we ever did, big deal. It sounded like a government so, answer. Yeah, it was, uh, and yeah. I, I think, it, and to your point too, and uh, you know, just to make sure, like I, I, I get called like a Google fanboy because it sounds like I'm defending them constantly. And I'm really not. I, I think there's a major missed opportunity 
from you know uh, from a PR standpoint or, or just a, a community standpoint with dealing with the, the SEOs of the world or whatever to where they could come out with something that is completely useful, completely handy, um, you know, and something that, that would really um, help, you know, in our discussions with our clients and things like that about how these things all work together without actually causing any damage to uh, Google itself as far as like their proprietary technology or anything like that. It doesn't, it doesn't always have to do the temperature, but I think that over there, they're kind of overly cautious sometimes with that effort type of information that could really just put a lot of things to bed and again cause these arguments to go away without necessarily giving up the the algorithm and in a sense to it and uh, that was a major missed opportunity I agree like it's they could have easily come back and said in reality these are what these numbers have been and even if they gave away ranges it goes ah it's probably about here it's probably about this or whatever it is it would have like solved that that problem to it and now it's not them not doing that makes you question makes you really yeah. say maybe Rand's right yeah exactly and, that, and that's where it comes from yeah he's maybe, maybe that number is, what it is the yeah. average maybe the number a average yeah. is is 50 percent yeah, and now I don't think we'll, we'll I mean, we may hear it um, one day when, um, you know, they finally drag in yeah, uh, the for the antitrust stuff, but I don't know, they, it's funny, the uh, antitrust things that are going on right now, um, the uh, the way those laws are written, those laws are all predate the internet yeah. of these types of companies, and they're, they're not going to do anything, they have to get rewritten before they can do anything that, we'll that really costs that, yeah. yeah. All right, so with all of this, and I think we should round, that, round out this conversation mm -hmm. with, like, so it seems like, you know, Correlation studies, no good. Yeah. Nobody really knows how to rank stuff anymore based on those studies. At least. Yeah. <laughs> Zero click, you know, traffic to our sites are getting less and less. Google is, you're not going to argue that Google's not trying to contain more of the search results yeah. with all the features, but still there's opportunity for us to play with that. Yeah. Is the future of search and SEO, it's like SEO dead? And the answer is probably no, but. It's not, it's not dead. And it's not, as long as there's, as long as there's search engines, like there, I think there will always be a need for SEO. I, I think my vision for it, I've been working on a book forever on this one. And I, I use pieces of it right now at, um, in my class at UCLA and, and pieces of it actually have been released as individual blog posts for, for the journal and for other places. And, and, but the, the point is, is that it's like, what's actually going to happen is very similar to what happened with, um, television advertising back in the, like the, you know, the other early days. So during the golden days of uh, advertising, golden age or whatever, the Mad Men era of things like that, there were television advertising specialists that were inside of the agency and that's what their job was. And that's all they did. And eventually that job went away because just anybody that worked in media knew how to do television and knew how to do radio, knew how to do all this stuff. of thing. It was just part of their job. And I think that's ultimately not, not what's only going to happen to SEO, but it's also what's going to happen to digital in the sense that, you know, there will be no more like digital marketing. There'll be marketing with, you know, digital things or whatever it is. And SEO is, is like the future of it will come down to the point to where, and it's, it's probably going to start at the enterprise level where you have these companies that, that won't necessarily need like the SEO guru or the SEO team inside of it. They'll, they'll go through and realize that like, Hey, look, it's really this collection of content, website architecture, and authority from from links, and we can go through and redistribute that in the organization to where we've got great writers. We just need to make sure those writers understand that they're writing for an audience that uses search engines. We, you know, we have a development team. We just need to get them to stop screwing around and and you know stay up to speed with everything that actually could affect search engines and why it plays for that. So they just do that as part of their regular job, and then you know get the the public relations team who are the best link builders in the world. You know, like they they get the best juiciest link do. you ever yeah, see, right? That's the and uh, and it's always the fantastic stuff, whatever. You just need to, you know, like them, they're the closest of us. You just need to get them to tweak it and to learn the idea that like, hey, those links that you're getting, you know, they're getting to go to specific pages or, or to like new content or work with it where everybody kind of works in these organizations together. And it's not gonna happen overnight. It's not like SEOs are just gonna wake up one morning and their jobs are gone. It's something where it'll start to like just disappear. Uh, who knows how long to do it. And I think, where the biggest arguments I get against that as a concept usually come from SEOs that are kind of worried that like their job will go away. And, and I said, look, that's a, it's a big fear. Things like that happen. Anytime there's a change, it can, you know, cause some damage to employment and things like that. But in reality, they could write into that. They could actually go through and decide like, well, I'm sticking to this piece of it and I'm going to become the web developer part of it, or I'm going to stick to the technical sides of things and become this or whatever it is. Um, or they could still continue to be consultants or whatever it is, but that's kind of where it is. But it's never going to happen inside of these, these enterprise organizations unless there's a certain level of change management 
that is brought into it as well. And that's usually, that's not just an SEO thing. That is just a universal big company problem. Right. Uh, anytime you actually do some change, if you don't have that system built into it and everything you can do. Um, so it's one of the things I teach at UCLA is, is there's a class on change management and the, uh, a lot of things that come from McKinsey and some of the other people that have written on this and like how you can really um, bring this into your organization successfully and keep it there and keep it as part of the training, you know, something that could get passed along and it becomes part of it. And we've, you know, it's something I've been testing, you know, as an agency for, you know, like over a decade now with companies like the Smithsonian and Manchester United and, and Sony and things like that. And, um, you know, sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. Uh, and usually when it's not, it's because they didn't listen to the change management part, you know, so you just know this is what it is. And it kind of just proves my point that it's like, hey, look, it's that's going to happen but eventually that'll stop managing it and i don't think it's because anything massive that google is really doing although some of it will be but i think it's really the enterprise companies will make their own minds up at some point go like wait a minute we can just do this we we don't we don't have to like be hiring other people to do this. We just need people to upgrade their skill sets a bit, and then suddenly it's just there. And when it starts there, it'll trickle down. Like medium-sized businesses will be next, um, and usually the only people that may need a little help on this one will be the small businesses that are still be kind of like you know gobbling around trying to figure this type of stuff out. But then there'll still be plenty of people that know how to do this stuff, and they'll probably market it as something else, you know, entirely, where it'll just be like part of the nomenclature for like, oh, this is just a small business, or it's back to calling it directory market marketing or something along those lines but it's it's you know it's something where um it'll evaporate and the the words will kind of disappear but it's going to be a while before this type of happens but it, it's again it's not that it's died it's just that it's like everybody's kind of like forgotten about it in, in those sense so but you know and hopefully don't they don't forget about all of us and the, the people that we're working on in the beginning but it's it's bound to happen so maybe hopefully i'm retired by the time it does <laughs> but, you're getting there right yeah so, exactly cool so honestly you're Excellent communicator. Um, mm. I barely spoke. Usually I'm speaking half the time. So <laughs> I, I appreciate you sharing all those words of wisdom and telling us about your history. And I hope you continue to do what you do in the industry for a really long time. Um, don't retire yet for us, please. Nope, nope. And yeah, hopefully I get to see everybody back on the road again. I'm, I'm really excited that uh, things are opening back up and the, the conferences are coming back. And uh, yeah. I'm starting to get the invites to speak again. And it's, uh, good, so yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I miss the road. I really do. It's like two years of just being like cooped up it's a you know that's one of the reasons why i was so happy to come see you and you know it's like oh, i'm coming to new york i gotta see barry i gotta <laughs> well, i appreciate you making it out to here yeah i'm not that close to new york city i'm about a yeah. 40 minute drive if you drive but yeah especially when you're you're staying on the upper west side you said yeah pretty close if yeah. you probably took trains probably took it's a nice little train ride actually it wasn't too bad <laughs> yeah all right, good. all right cool anyway uh how can people learn more about you follow you and stuff like that tell people in the camera here sure sure it's uh um you know the website um, amplitude digital.com um if you want to follow me on Twitter, which I, I highly recommend, it's uh, Count Zero with an X, uh, named after the William Gibson book. And, and uh, yeah, that's usually the best place to find me. Uh, if not, LinkedIn, all the good places like that, are, yeah, I'm easy to find. Cool. Thank you so much for doing this. No problem. It. My pleasure.